uh, of course it can mean you know like the surface uh, but there's also a, a meaning of of turning and and we know when we look at generators and and things of that nature we see something moving to create electricity um wow wow and, and people say, people say the dome moves like in the track yeah yeah that's a trip yeah so does that move or is there some yeah i think it's possible yeah i think it's possible i don't know that's i mean that's a great question bro i i am i have no idea it, to me it's equally viable that it moves or doesn't move um yeah but like like what i think i'm already wondering what you think so I, so yeah you have the circle drawn but it just seems like it's a circle drawn in the midst of water right like it's like this frozen boundary around water and seemingly the firmament would come touch down there maybe and then there's just water outside of it. and in the bible it says he set the like stars the in the firmament wild. so if Either we're watching the stars he got the to the firmament well, yeah, so Either. then you would think, like, so if there are multiple layers to the firmament, say, say you get out to the circle and there's a firmament coming down, then you would, if you just kept walking straight out on the plane, you would go through different layers. I don't think you physically can, like, as a material person, I don't think you can. Just say you could, right? If you envision, like, a giant tent, but the tent has seven layers, well, then if you're on the bottom and you're walking to the side of it, if you get to the edge... You're going to go through multiple layers there. And then there is the sun. There's the moon. There's the layer that has the stars. There are, there's all this stuff within their own layers. That's how I currently conceive of it. Yeah. I could be wrong. Publicly there's, publicly, there's a lot of layers. If you went into the Holy of Holies, you had to pass through the gate. You had to go through the truth. There was various doors that led to the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was stored. So many times publicly there's layers. I've also seen the, the Jewish account of those seven, the seven heavens, seven firmament. Yep. Oh, I mean, and, and the Babylonian depiction and the Hindu depiction. I mean, like the whole world knew apparently that there are seven layers to the firmament. If you have the deepest spot, right? Let's say you're building something and you have the deepest spot, the face of the deepest spot, you're going to carve a circle in it. Now, for what purpose would you do that? Would you, would you carve out a circle to keep the water in or would you carve out a circle to put something in the track and to either seal it or make it so it could move in the track? So, yeah, the, one of the last two, I would guess. Yeah, that, that, that's what I would think. And then I think of, you know, like the rotor and the stator and, and all of those things. But it's, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's very, it is very interesting. Like, could the whole thing be moving or? Something outside. Or, or, moving, or is yeah, it optical? Yeah. Either the rotor or the stator is moving and one is stationary. That's, that's how it goes. So. Yeah, something's moving, right? I mean, there's uh, something, there's movement. The question is like, is the firmament itself moving or is that basically like, um, is that like a fish tank? You know what I'm saying? Like it, are things swimming through it? So if you, the whole fish tank would be moving or things are swimming through it. Right. Yeah, just on the, just on that PowerPoint that you mentioned or the, the creation of energy or electricity. And when we refer to like AC, then there's often a moving part. But when it comes to DC power, such as like sunlight catching DC energy through solar panels or storing it in batteries, etc., DC is prevalent just, just inherently. So the same way that you have an electrostatic charge that gains 100 volts with each meter above the surface of the Earth, that's DC current. And it's just intrinsically, but again... Is it because something's moving above us that there's this intrinsic DC voltage? Interesting. So that's kind of where I'm at right now is we see all the motion in the sky. So 
there is some force. There's a force. And seemingly there's a central point of that force. And if I apply it to like everything else I see, you, everything is the same geometry. It's the same thing. It's like the magnetic torus field. But then you have like the center point and everything moving around it. And I would say, I, I mean, you know, maybe the throne is in the center. Right. So like everything is, sorry if that's loud. Everything is moving around the throne. And I guess in this, with this application, the question would be would like, would that call, would the whole entire, would the whole entire containment move around as well? I don't know. But uh, yeah. that's how uh, I currently can see it. I've seen someone postulating that the North Star Polaris is that point of rotation, which is why it is stationary while everything else moves around it. And then Polaris is directly above the North Pole. Something I was thinking about this week is why why was the a why is the azimuthal equidistant map pro projected from the center outwards? So if you take the a if you take the AE map, apparently all distances from center to the different countries are accurate. But then the width of the continent are slightly distorted. Someone saw it my head. Elbow your hot mic. So, like, why why this obsession with the center point? And then to have the entire center removed, if you look at the, the Makeda map, I think it's the 1760 Makeda or the 1670, the one where he drew the four continents at the center with Mount Meru, the black, the black mountain at the middle. When yeah. was that center removed from our maps? And then why would the azimuthal equidistant be projected from center outwards if we don't know what the center actually is how would we even know the dimensions from the center to every other city around the world and why would you ever draw a map from the middle outwards it just i don't know it doesn't make sense to me well i mean it's not even disputed that they use polaris to even get the latitudes right so they, they did angle measurements to Polaris to get the latitude. So I will say this though: Polaris does slightly move, and uh, not the way they say. It. Like over time, it comes this place, and it's not really at the center. No, that's not true. It does slightly move, like it's like it's doing a small little circuit, like vibratory little circuit. And so I think Polaris is just the star closest to the throne. I don't think that we can even see it, the throne. And I think that Polaris is the closest you get to the center and that everything moves in relation to that. So if you're going to construct a map or anything like that, that would be the best starting point. But uh, that means our maps automatically can't be like perfect. We can't know the true center because Polaris is actually not ex exactly in the middle. It's, it moves a little bit throughout the year. So do you think that they're using the GP ground position of Polaris as the center and then measuring supposedly to that calculated position? Do you think that there's still four continents at the center of the Earth? I think so, yeah. Now, they may, now there's an argument that those got removed, like physically removed. I don't know. Like, there's an argument the garden got physically removed. That's the eastern portion of that. I, I don't know. I think there's definitely, they're, they're there, personally. Because Makeda is the projection that most of us learned at school. And Makeda's map showed those four land masses at the center. And it's, he was a... Yeah, how hilarious a, is a, that? He's an acclaimed cartographer. So, it's not like he was drawing an imaginary or a fictitious map. All of his other maps are taken as, as factual. But yeah, the, I literally the idea, I have it hanging on my wall. The idea of a central mountain that all of our compasses are attracted to and none of us actually march towards that central position also baffles me. It's like when we know what's good for us, but we just don't do it. 
but then I've often wondered if it's spiritual, why we can't see those land masses anymore. Like, is it once once we once we fell and we were no longer pure, and God kicked us out the garden, or Adam and Eve out the garden, were we then no? Here, give me a second. People that argument believe. gets dismissed by ballers. They say Mercator so, might have had religious backgrounds and was probably drawing something that more matched a religious text. That's what they said. The the word north in, um, in Hebrew, if you look up the meaning, uh, some people would say it's, it's hidden in a dark, gloomy place. Uh, others will tell you it's the key. Um, so... It's, it's very interesting when we look at these words and see what the meaning of them is. Yeah, the root of north is or, the O-R, and O-R normally referred to center. And then the southern, the, the, in, the contained portion inside of a south, is the out, O-U-T. So the southern is the outer, and the northern, nor, is the inner. Like you said, there's a lot involved in these words but the same way that there's that iron republic book that talks about traveling south getting through the ice shelf finding continents on the other side of the ice shelf that were way more advanced and the book came out in the late 1800s they were talking about cell phones and communicating wirelessly with people and screens that had information being broadcast on them all kinds of really futuristic stuff there's also a book, I can't think of its name now, but it talks about sailing to the center. And there's actually a whirlpool at the center. And as they traveled inward, it started sort of sucking the boats down those four, those four rivers that meet at the central point. That once you were caught in one of those riptides, that was it, your boat was finished. So anyone who travels northward eventually would crash or get shipwrecked. That could also be why we don't really know what is there. But I think it's quite evident that the early cartographers were using aerial, some sort of aerial travel to map the, the coastlines. Because if you've ever sailed next to a coastline, a coastline that's quite, quite jaggedy appears quite straight when you're on the ocean level. But go in a plane, rise up a little bit, you can start to see the contours of the land. But now hot air balloons, the Chinese were using Chinese lanterns from 2000, 2,500 years ago. They were using heat to create lift. So the idea of a hot air balloon would have been a much smarter way for you to be able to map out the contours. Therefore, viewing the north from, from the air would have avoided any of that tidal or will pull challenges many years yeah, ago they I, say think, I think someone did the um, um some photography or long distance photography in, in south carolina and i think it was myrtle beach that's one of the longest strands there is i believe that we have it's like 50 miles or so or, or longer maybe you guys remember that? I don't know, but it sounds amazing. You guys hear me? Yep, yeah, I hear you. Saying because I hate push to talk. 